If you've just joined us, you're watching Newslink on DSTV Channel 403. Now the ANC is ordering its MPs to reject the adoption of the Section 89 panel report. That vote has now been postponed to next week. Meanwhile, the Speaker of Parliament has denied a request from the ATM for a secret ballot. The Democratic Alliance, though, has declined a proposal to table a motion of no confidence in President Sarawak Posa. It says it rather wants to allow the impeachment process to play itself out. Let's speak now to the DA's Chief Whip, Sivuya Kwarube. Sivuya, good morning and thank you very much for your time. Quite a lot is happening. The parliamentary sitting on the vote on of the Section 89 report has been postponed to next week, but it remains important to know where the DA stands on the vote given that you submitted your motion to dissolve the National Assembly yesterday. Where exactly do you stand on this? Yeah. So I think three things are quite important. Good morning to you and your viewers. I think three things are important. Number one, that we are in full support of the report of the independent panel coming to parliament and being voted on. And we are urging other political parties besides just, you know, the opposition parties to vote for this process. And the reason why we are saying vote for the process to continue is because one would assume if a president who has now on record on both on his um, uh, responses to the independent panel and in his papers that he submitted to the Concord yesterday states that he is innocent, then one would believe that in fact he would want an impeachment inquiry so that it can be able to investigate this matter and put to bed some of the serious allegations that he's facing. So it is absolutely bizarre to us that the ANC would give an instruction to the, to the ANC caucus in parliament to say that they must vote against the establishment of an impeachment inquiry, because it is the very inquiry that's going to get us closer to the truth. The reality is that this is a report that was commissioned by parliament. The ANC in Parliament can't simply abandon now the, the, the report that we have commissioned in the millions of rands, by the way, of, of public money, simply abandon the report because it says something that they don't want to say. So the one thing is that we support that the matter must now move on to the next level, that there must be an impeachment inquiry so that the president can, in his own words, clear his name. Otherwise, this reeks of the Zuma years where the former president used to say, I want my day in court. And then the day that it finally came, he would do everything in his power to obfuscate and delay the process. Number two, when the other opposition parties requested the DA to submit a motion of no confidence, we, 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 we detailed to them in a letter that it is not advisable right now while the National Assembly is dealing with the removal of a president through an impeachment process to then bring in a motion of no confidence, which seeks to achieve the same thing. Hmm. We have said that but once the, the matter has played itself out in Parliament, we are happy to then go back to the drawing board and see where to from there. But it's really something that uh, boggles my mind when people are simply suggesting that, well, let's abandon this process. This process has to live itself out. We This is a report by Parliament that has cost millions of rands that we now must, and it makes grave and serious findings against a sitting president. Mm -hmm. Now, on that particular report, the president says, though, it is flawed in law. And we've had a number of analysts coming to share their views, some uh, the likes of advocate Tulima Donsela saying that what they were intended to do, they failed to do, because she says they were required to establish or extract sufficient evidence but instead they got sufficient information, whereas the information was supposed to lead them to the evidence. What exactly was the mandate of this particular panel? Because from our understanding, it's a three-staged process. This was the preliminary stage, which really didn't have to establish the veracity or even the seriousness of the charges. It just had to give us what is there on the face of it and establish if there is indeed a case to answer. What did you understand of the mandate of the panel and did they sufficiently execute their duties? Well, Section 8 and 9 is very clear about what an independent panel of this nature needs to do, that they need to ascertain whether or not there's prima facie evidence which suggests that the president has a case to answer for, prima facie evidence that suggests that the president may have broken the law. And in our view, the panel did that. They said there are a number of things that the president needs to answer for in, relate, in relation to uh, provisions of PRECA, in relation to gross misconduct in the Constitution, in relation to some of his uh, private business interests. These are the things that they've said, look, 
establish an impeachment inquiry and dig deeper into these matters. And so this is where we are now. And I think there's a misconception, uh, not only just you know out there, but also within some of our, our colleagues in the benches, that uh, next week, well, which was meant to be today, but next week we're going to be voting to impeach a president. No, mm. we are voting to say that establish an impeachment inquiry, which will then drill deeper into the things that the panel has identified needs attention. And for me, it, it makes no absolutely no sense why everybody is in a frenzy about the fact that this will cause great instability and the like. This is a president who claims his innocence. And so then an impeachment inquiry, in my view, would give him a great opportunity to dispel some of those things. And so what I would think is that the ANC would want to move um, in that direction. Mm -hmm. But of course, you see what we are here, uh, the, which is the problem, is that we are dealing with um, a, a party that is embroiled in its own internal uh -huh. politics, mm -hmm. that is less concerned about accountability in Parliament, but more concerned about a Congress, a conference that's happening in a couple of weeks. And this is why the DA leader then has said, maybe it's important to uh, utilize the section of the Constitution, section 50 of the Constitution that says dissolve Parliament, because the drafters of the Constitution may have known that there'll be instances where, in fact, the instability of one political party is now threatening the instability of an entire country. Mm -hmm. I, I want to I'll take you back to, apologies for interjecting, I just want to take you back to where you say there seems to be confusion or this frenzy now about <laughs> this preliminary stage. Is it really confusion or it's deliberate? Because some were surprised that with just the handing over of that preliminary one, there were calls for the president to step down because that on its own could have easily been what pushed the president to fight this even harder because they made the preliminary report to be more than what it actually is, which really it doesn't pronounce on the president's innocence or guilt. What it does say is that the president has a lot to answer for, which we've all known, right? Up and we've we've all known and we've implored, impl implored the president to take the nation into his confidence, address parliament and address some of these key questions which have ex long existed. And so, I mean, you know, whether it's mischievous and deliberate or it's a misconception that is born from pure uh, confusion, I think it, 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 you know, it's something for, for one to interpret themselves. But definitely what is happening here is that the ANC is not concerned about the fact that we commissioned a report. The report comes back and says what they may not necessarily want to hear. They are more concerned about the Congress that is coming up uh, next week and what then that means for their own different factional battles. And that for me is a huge indictment because before we are office bearers of political parties, we are members of parliament. We have been sent here to serve the people of South Africa. And I would think that at the very least, regardless of our party political differences, that we would want to first be loyal to the constitution that we all saw to uphold. And the constitution is clear. If there are doubts about the president having upheld his oath of office, then you've got to investigate him through an impeachment inquiry. It does not mean that we are voting to impeach President Cyril Ramaphosa. It's saying that go investigate him because there are questions that are yet to be answered. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are imploring different political parties to do. Mm -hmm. Now the option of the dissolution of parliament, does it honestly enjoy a lot of support here? Because it seems just on the face of it, having listened to the EFF at the very least yesterday, they seem to think it's not the route to take. There is a deputy president. He would step in should the president step down. But you're saying he's probably not the candidate to, to take over. Well, more than that, I think the, 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 the problem here that we have is that Essentially, what is happening now is going to be re relegating a choice of this magnitude of choosing who um, is going to be the head of state going forward between now and 2024, and simply putting that in the hands of a few ANC individuals that are going to choose who will be the caretaker president. And our view is simple, that we want to make sure that we bring power back to the people. The drafters of the Constitution would have known that, in fact, there will come a time where you would want to invoke Section 50 of the Constitution, which says if you've already uh, 
uh, traversed uh, three years of the term, um, which we already have, you may call an early election and the National Assembly may be dissolved. We think that essentially what we are having is such South Africans having to choose between a, a potentially compromised president and a compromised a slew of other people who may very well be take a president. This, in this scenario, it's a no-win situation for ordinary South Africans. And that's what we're saying. Put the power back in their hands. And if they vote back an ANC government, then that is the democratic process that they're entitled to. But to, to say that oh, the decision must be limited to just a few people uh, within the ANC to make that decision, in our view, quite frankly, is not in the best interest of South Africans, particularly considering how the ANC has behaved uh, whenever any of their leaders is implicated in wrongdoing. Sivira, thank you very much for your time this morning. That was DA Chief Whip Sivire Kwahobe.